Hello Corkies! Today we are going to be showing you how to put together an at-home bar that is basic but budget-friendly. You're going to want to stay tuned for our tips and tricks. Hello everybody! Welcome back to CorkandJava.com. I'm Billy and this is Bryn. And we all know you're supposed to get joy and fascination from even the little things in life that most people take for granted. So here at Cork and Java, we're here to expand and enrich your experience with all of your favorite beverages through wine and coffee and other beverage reviews and how-tos. And today, we're going to be showing you the basics for setting up a budget-friendly bar that uh, will get you going, making all sorts of cocktails and all the things you love. Yep. So, as you can see, we are standing at our bar. Um, it's not really a bar per se, but it's our cabinet that we keep our liquor in that my grandfather built for us when we first moved into our home. It is both our coffee bar and right. our liquor bar. Yes. And that's what we're getting into first, the liquor. So, no bar is complete without liquor, of course. That's the base for all your cocktails. And it's important to store your liquor in a a uh, fairly cool uh, place that doesn't have much temperature fluctuation and also it's important that it's in a uh, a dark environment that is not getting direct sunlight because that will cause damage to your liquors. You don't want to put this in your window or anything like that or anywhere in your house that's going to see direct sunlight. So we put it, all of our liquors down in our cabinets. So what are some some good liquors to have on hand for most for the majority of cocktails, I would okay. say. Okay, so yeah, this list will be more tempered to our taste, but for all around good cocktails that you're gonna want, you're gonna want vodka for sure, very yeah. nice. Um, you're gonna want, uh, what are you pulling out, bourbon? Bourbon? Um, you can go with uh, bourbon or any really kind of whiskey you like for a lot of uh, those kind of classic cocktails. For classic cocktails, we like to go with rye whiskeys are uh, rye bourbons and those are great but if you're a Tennessee whiskey fan you can get away with that for a lot of uh, drinks that require bourbon or whiskey like whiskey sours you can you can throw your Jack Daniels if you're a fan of that we're not too much so uh, we don't really have much Tennessee whiskey on hand mm -hmm. uh, you're also going to want to have rum and you can have uh, the light rum and the dark or spiced rum Usually um, you can get away with putting the light rum in more cocktails um, and substituting the- um, White for the dark. The white, yeah, white, thank you. Um, so, but definitely have both on hand for whichever cocktails strike your fancy. Um, we love gin, so we always have a bottle of gin um, for our cocktails at home. Yeah, gin's good, also tequila. Tequila sunrises, margaritas, mm -hmm. all those great things. And uh, I mean, there's a plenty of other liquors, but I think those are the basics. Yeah, those are our, probably our top five liquors that every bar cart or cabinet or whatever should have. Now for some liqueurs and other things that uh, you're gonna want. So let's start with ones that you probably always want on hand. Mm -hmm. One is grenadine. Yep. This stuff is so, such loaded in sugar, it doesn't really <laughs> go bad. Um, you don't really have to worry about it. And they come in decently small bottles, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of cocktails mm -hmm. that use grenadine and it's really, really nice. Another thing to get, especially if you like classic cocktails, are bitters. And we have two different kinds here. Um, I don't even know how One's to... an orange bitter and then... Yeah, one's an orange bitter. This is, I just love this stuff. And then I don't know how to pronounce this one, but this is more the classic type of bitter. Just call it aromatic cocktail bitters. That's yeah. what it says on the label. So we'll just go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> it's the classic uh, bitter flavor. Mm -hmm. So you want to explain our liqueur strategy. So a liqueur is an alcoholic sweetened infused. Not necessarily sweetened, but it's an infused spirit. It's an infused spirit. It's tip They're typically Usually sweet. sweet. Um, ones that we use a lot are Bailey's and Kahlua, Kahlua. although we make our own Kahlua here. And uh, check out our channel for our homemade Kahlua recipe because it'll knock your socks off. It's the best coffee liqueur that you'll find. 
It's yeah, better it than is better than store bought Kahlua, name brand Kahlua. Yeah. But we. But coffee liqueur. Um. Yeah. So if you want to explain kind of our strategy for liqueurs because they do go bad after a while. They don't last as long as liquor does, um, and so especially like sweet vermouth and stuff like that. That'll only last maybe a month or two if you store it in the fridge. Yeah. So what we tend to do is we go on like kind of cocktail kicks. That way we're not just like letting it go bad in the cabinet. So um, I was on a mudslide kick for a while. <laughs> so I was using the Baileys and Kahlua um, for the mudslides. Yeah, we kind of research what types of cocktails we want to make for um, a few month time span basically. Mm -hmm. So if we get uh, sweet vermouth, we'll be doing sweet vermouth uh, cocktails and we won't buy some of the other liqueurs that are out there. And then we might go and get uh, blue curacao in the summer and then do some refreshing drinks that feature blue curacao. So we kind of focus on the liqueur and uh, pace ourselves through them um, one at a time or so, uh, just so we're not having stuff go bad on us. Right. I go to Pinterest a lot for inspiration, so um, definitely check out our Pinterest boards because we have a lot of great cocktails ideas um, I think I pin more cocktails than anything else. I yeah, Pinterest. yeah. Pinterest is a wonderful resource for putting together a cocktail. So I mean, that's where I get most of my cocktail inspiration. So um, yeah. So I guess Bailey's Kahlua. Um, I used to drink a lot of Midori back in college, after college, but that's just too sweet for me now. I can't even mix that with Sprite or anything ginger ale. Well, it's just, speaking it's of which, much. Sprite. It's a good one to have on hand. Club mm -hmm. soda is in a lot, so yes. and that does isn't going to go bad. It's water, right. so club soda on hand. Um, it, well, you want to get into gadgets? No, I was going to say that a lot of people pr prefer tonic water, um, G and T's gin and tonics. Um, we're not huge into that particular flavor, but that's a good um, basic thing to have. A lot of people do like tonic water um, or ginger ale or ginger beer. Those are also good mixers. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, yeah, now we can talk gadgets. All right, gadgets. So uh, let's talk glassware first. Okay. So you're going to want to invest in some types of glassware. You don't have to get everything. If you have stuff you know, juice glasses work really well. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have like a low ball glass or a high ball glass, a lot of times a juice glass will work perfectly fine. That's what we typically use for our low ball glasses. Mm -hmm. And then our normal glasses we use for our high ball glasses. So you don't necessarily have to get every style out there it's imaginable, but we really do recommend martini glasses. They're great. It really adds a lot to um, martinis and Manhattans and Cosmopolitans yep. and do tons of drinks. So that's that's one that I recommend you have. Another uh, good gadget to have is some something to measure your uh, pores with, mm -hmm. like a jigger. But if you don't have a jigger, which is um, it's like a two-way shot glass kind of thing, it has two ounces on one side and an ounce on the other. Usually, sometimes it'll have yeah. like an ounce and a half or a half ounce or whatever. Yeah, but. they vary in how uh, the, the sizes. But you can get away if you just have a normal shot glass using that as a measuring device as well. That's typically what we well, use. Well, you can just measuring. eyeball it if you have to. <laughs> yeah, I've I've done enough. Once you once you make enough cocktails, you kind of know by eye how many ounces something is. And there's oftentimes a lot of leeway in uh, what you're making, unless you're making mm -hmm. it for the first time. Right. Maybe you want to measure it then. Yeah. Um, but another important tool is. The cocktail shaker. Mm -hmm. Now this one comes with a nice um, kind of built-in strainer. Built-in strainer. I mean, it's not going to strain the little stuff. Uh, you can get cocktail shakers that have um, more fine strainers, or you can. A lot of cocktail shakers, it's just this piece, and you put your glass in the other side, mm -hmm. and then it comes with a, a strainer um, to use as well. We'll leave a link to. A, a nice cocktail shaker, shaker and a lot of the other gadgets we're talking about in the video description so you can check out and uh, start building your bar so definitely check out and the And all links. of these are pretty like inexpensive items like yeah, they're cheap. $10 or under type things so. Next thing is a, is a muddler mm -hmm. for uh, some of those drinks where you got like fruit that you need to crush down in there. 
Yeah, you want to. We've tried it with a spoon for so long. <laughs> if you need to extract oils, juices, like if you have mint leaves that you're like muddling down in there, it works so much better than most of the tools around your kitchen. We tried using a spoon for a while, that doesn't work. So we definitely invested in a muddler, definitely four and a half. Then a stir. This is great um, for just stirring drinks. Uh, it's a nice accessory to have. Of course, you can use a spoon, but this is definitely fancier. And it's got the little fork for getting the little cherries out of the jar. So definitely stir. They're super cheap, so it's, it's a good one to yeah, have. Yeah, actually, we bought this. The muddler and the, the stir came together. Yeah. And it was, I think it was $9.99 on Amazon. Cool. Oh, another really cool thing to have is really nice big ice. I don't know what to call it. We have it's a uh, nice ball. <laughs> yeah, we have these um, molds that make big ice balls. Um, you can get ones that make clear ice, but they take up a ton of space in your freezer because those require almost like a cooler inside your freezer. So it kind of directs the direction that the ice is um, forming. And you also have to time things when you're doing that. It's like has to be like exactly 24 hours when you pull it out. So it's kind of a hassle just to make it clear. So we went ahead and just got, and they're also cheaper, uh, big balls of ice. And it also comes with um, big cubes of ice. And we like to use both. Mm -hmm. It's also good for coffee. I use them, both of them, with uh, cold brews. Uh, it's good because it doesn't melt as fast as other ice will and won't dilute your cocktails quite as fast. And it just looks a lot fancier. It looks really cool. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, there's obviously way more things that you can invest in for your beginner bars. Leave a comment uh, with what we missed. Uh, what would you put in your bar that maybe we left out? Or what is your favorite thing that we talked about? Maybe one of the gadgets that is a must have for your bar. Make sure that you guys find us online. We are on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and on Instagram, so don't miss out. We're looking forward to seeing you guys online, so until next time, bottoms up.